Welcome back to episode 5 of Excel. Looking at how to graph all the data that you got from your Pendulum Lab. Thank you for watching the filler episode. I'm just kidding. This is not a filler episode. But I am going over a lot of the things that you looked at in previous in previous episodes where we have learned how to graph your data, put in trend lines, axes, error bars, etc. So all of this should be review and if you have a chance to, I actually recommend you try this out yourself before getting spoiled by this video. Last, a recap on the last episode, what we did was we looked at how to do uh, uncertainty propagation on Excel. One cool function that I taught us how to do was look at the dollar signs, the function of dollar signs, which allows allows you to hold a reference in place even if you're going from one row to the next row as you're dragging and dropping the function. So that's something cool I taught, uh, I showed you last time, is to holding a self-reference function, uh, self-reference. Let's get down to business and make this new graph. First, I am going to enter, I'm going to insert a new graph because I need to manually select all my data. So I go to insert on the top, go to chart here on the bottom. I click on the scatter plot, give it some space. I need to select some data. So I'm going to right click, select data, add. I will enter my X here values by clicking this little upload button. I'm going to upload now. I'm no longer using this original length values. I am using the newly squared length values for my linearized graph. I select these and I press the download button. I select my Y values, press the upload button, and I will select the time average divided by 10, the time for 10 peri uh, ten, one period, which are these values. I go back, I press OK, OK, and look at that nice straight line just by linearizing this data. Take a look at the axes. Even the axes are changed. The scaling has changed depending on my data. I'm going to make this graph a little bigger. And now what I need to do is I need to add in all the beautiful components of a graph, such as axes title. Click on the plus, go to axes title, or actually just check it. You have all your axes title. I'm going to give this a nice chart title. Axes title, period in seconds. This is where some people tend to forget. You go to the axis title for your x-axis. Remember, this is length to the power of a half. Or actually, you know what? If you know how to do this by hand, or if you do, if you're using PC, control, shift, and equals actually gives you the subscript, uh, superscript. I'm gonna press here, a uh, half, or 0 0.5. Control, shift, equals, a shortcut to get the, something to get back down to ground. Meter, same thing, control, shift, plus, 0 0.5 as a new dimensions, zero, control, shift, plus, equals and closing the brackets. Okay, so make sure you always adjust the labeling of your x axis if you've linearized your graph. Now for the trend line, plus trend line and click for more options. We got a linear graph, perfect, and we want to also display equation on the chart. Close it and it should now appear. Okay, so we got a trend line, we got our equation. Last but not least, our error bars. Click on the plus sign, click, go to error bars, and go down to more options. This is gonna be a little different than before. For our vertical error bars, that's the same as in our previous graph, but it's still custom. I'm still selecting the value because they're on my chart, are my tables. My upper range, is t average divided by 10 uncertainty these guys over here select download do the same thing for my lower range select the same set download okay okay those horizontal ones need to be changed so click on the horizontal error bars on your graph uh error bar options you're gonna well if you accidentally left it you're gonna go back to here error bar options a little the bar these bars here <laughs> Again, these will be custom because now they are different depending on which data point we're talking about. So I'm gonna click on custom. It's no longer a fixed value. Custom specify value, positive error value are these guys. 
and the same thing for the negative error values down here below go back okay and there we go there we have it so look at all these beautiful propagated uncertainties in their new error bars and again sometimes our line is not going to go through all our data of not all of our error bars but we always try our best excel does it for us and here we have it the linearized graph of period and the square root of length of a pendulum the things that are new and to watch out for that i've mentioned in this video video that are not review number one is to make sure that your x axes are properly labeled with the correct dimensions and units of your length or whatever that one is your new error bars, because they are modified, they're propagated, they will, you will also need to use to select the range or customize the selection of your error bars up and down. And look, what I forgot to do was I forgot to round these up to appropriate significant figures. This is up to four decimal places. For there to be one significant figure, there we go, it matches the one over here, bingo. And there we have it making the linearized graph of your pendulum. Hope you've got something out of this video and thank you for watching this filler episode, episode number five of Excel. You have one last finale episode number six on how to make max min slopes manually on Excel. Thank you for watching and see you next time on Excel.